Hi, this is Mai from Candu FM, and I'm with Caroline Vernon. You wear a couple of hats in the community. You are the head teacher at Victoria Academy, and you're also the chair of something you call FESP. What is FESP? So FESP is Furnace Education and Skills Partnership. Um, it started about in uh, 2011, and um, we try to bring together um, schools with the wider community Um we began really looking at um, helping young people into STEM careers. So we did lots of work for uh, the Royal Academy of Engineering, running the Barrow Engineering Project. Um, and our workers, um, I, that, that work continues, but we're also um, doing lots of work with health sector now um, and um, lots of businesses in the area still careers focused, but primarily about skills and developing skills and confidence for young people, raising awareness of opportunities in the area, just helping them to reach their potential in any way that we can. Um, I received something in the post this past week. It's very, very special, and you're a big part of creating it. I'm going to show it for our um, people who are viewing this online. I'll describe it for our listeners. It's a, a book that you helped create, you basically gave children a chance to talk about their own feelings about lockdown, about coronavirus, how the things have changed called living in lockdown. Our children remember, I wish it's a beautiful book and inside there's pictures and, and stories and things that children have written. How did you come to, to make this beautiful book? Um, so as a, a head teacher, um, I, I was concerned about the impact that the, the first lockdown was having on our children. Um, I was in a meeting with our Ceres worker, so that's supporting emotional resilience in schools. Uh, she does a lot of work with children, um, helping them through difficult times. Um, and she and I have been talking um, with someone from um, Bernardo's um, about the experiences that were ch the children were having. Um, I was starting to think about children coming back into school and their needs and whether there would be additional emotional mental health issues that we would need to support children with. Um, and out of that conversation, um, I, I don't know, it just came into my head. Wouldn't it be great if we could have a book by the children to share their experiences, thinking that it might be helpful for them in doing so? Um, and it kind of snowballed from there. Um, there's a couple of things from the book that uh, really just sort of jumped out at me. And the first one was sort of the art and the way that the, the children used art to express some of the, the stuff that was really hard, not being around for kids, not being around their peers there. You know, when you're in lockdown, you're surrounded by people who are telling you what to do. Whereas when you go to school, you get to be around your peers. Um, you get to do all the socialization. Um, so that's a bit about it. Um, but some of it's just the artwork, sort of what their stars are. They decorated them in special ways. So that was one of the parts that jumped out at me. And the other part that I really loved was this idea of writing a letter to your, your past, you know, and it, it's such a great reflective tool. And I think we could probably all do that is sort of to ourselves. Okay. What would I tell my from like two years ago? So 2019, what would I tell her? How would, what sort of things would I tell her to help her get through all of this? And the, the children have done this themselves. There's illustrated pictures as well. And I just think how remarkable that they were able to express that in such sort of thoughtful and mature ways. Um, is this something that you've shared with your own students? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, we thought that it would be great. So with my FESP hat on, um, we decided to try and make this project happen. Uh, we invited schools to join in. So there were two schools, uh, 10 schools that took part um, in Barrow and Millam and Havrick. Um, the funding was from the Barrow um, and Millam Primary Care Network um, and all, all that we said to the schools was, um, we would like you to help your children capture how they're feeling right now, the, the ways that they've coped um, and their wishes for the future. And we used um, the basis of a story for each workshop um, by, um, it, it's called Fishes and Wishes by the barn at Easington. And we asked them if we could use their 
they're, they're kind of scaffold for the project. We gave each of the schools um, a mental health practitioner to work with them, to lead workshops, to help the children to get their thoughts uh, and their feelings out onto paper. But we didn't want to, to, to steer the children in any way. Uh, and we didn't want to straightjacket the schools. So we basically said, here's the framework. You just do this in any way that your children feel comfortable, a way that they feel they can express their feelings. So... It could be a letter, it could be a poem, it could be a drawing, it could be a painting. Some of the children um, had painted stones. Um, some of the children are lying out on the grass in different shapes. And, you know, it was wonderful that they were so creative in expressing how they felt. So I am with Caroline Vernon. We've been talking about this really remarkable book written by local children, designed by local children, called Living in Lockdown. And... It's something, a, a project that you've worked very hard on and you've helped to bring all these schools in together um, to create this book to be shared. Now, who is this book for? It's for children and it's by children. Um, it's not adults assuming we know how the children feel. It's the children expressing themselves, absolutely. Um, we think that it will be nice for families to have, but it's also um, being given out to a lot of um, mental health practitioners, um, doctors' surgeries. Um, we've even had um, some people in Northumberland already asking for it, Northumbria rather, asking for it uh, to use in their work in the courts. They're dealing with family law. Um, the book's in London already as well. Um, it's Who's it really for? It's to help children uh, or to, to talk through with children who may be having challenging times now and in the future. And it's children's experiences of one day things were just normal, ticking along and whoosh, the next day everything had changed. The whole world had changed. Everything that was familiar had stopped. And that that's often how a crisis feels for a child from what they tell us. So then the book is to um, to offer ideas, strategies for how to be resilient, how to stay positive, new little things to try um, and hopes for the future. So it's just, it, it is a story, but it's really more of the children's experience that can be shared and discussed and looked at the pictures. Here's a lovely idea by this child. Um, you might you might want to try that or, you know, that, just that kind of thing, really. Just to, any, any opportunity to help a child to connect with another child mm -hmm. and be helped through a difficult time. And that's really something that's been missing is that connection and particularly having that sort of face-to-face -face connection that I think we're all missing a bit. Uh, so this book has been gifted to all the local schools. What if somebody would like to purchase the book for themselves or for someone um, that they think could benefit? How would they get in contact with you? Yeah, so um, the easiest way is um, to e uh, email, probably. So chair at FESP, that's F-E-S-P, dot co dot uk um and I, i'll communicate with wh whoever it is um at the moment um we're giving we're gifting the books but uh they are going out very rapidly they suddenly seem to become quite popular um so if we have to do another print run we will have to charge the book will be 395 and that will include postage um it, we're not making profit here. It's not about that. This is about just covering the publishing costs to mm -hmm. get out to anyone who wants it. Um, one of the words that we use quite often is resilience. And I think as adults, we quite like to protect young people. But I know that I certainly did with my 11-year-old uh, back in the spring. I wanted to protect him. Um, and I think we don't like talking to them about difficult things. We want to distract them, which is kind of the opposite of what you've got here. So do you think that there's a you know, value um, in letting kids you know, feel all those emotions that we might define as negative or sort of really think about how this has affected them? Absolutely, because we need to be honest. You know, this hasn't been a nice time for a lot of us. You know, it's been really difficult for children. They haven't had... Um, they haven't had their families around them. They've been stuck in the house quite a lot. 
They've had to rethink how they manage their days. They've seen their parents anxious as well. And that's a big, big thing for children. Um, and also, you know, we our sense of ourselves is based quite often on how other people respond to us. And suddenly the children have, don't have their peers mm -hmm. reaffirming who they are at all. So, you know, all of that's tough. It's tough stuff. And we didn't want to try and paint this as a pretty time because it hasn't been. Um, and this book, if this book can help children through difficult times in the future, then we it needs to be an honest book that says this is hard. This right now is really hard. But here's some things that you can try to make things better and to help you stay okay through it. And here are some hopes and dreams for the future. Well, um, it is uh, Children's Mental Health Week, and there's been quite a lot of information available about sort of the different programs available, places like Bernardo's um, who support young people. Um, as, as a parent or carer with a young person in the house, are there things that um, I can do to, to support my young person or even just to be aware of? Because sometimes kids aren't very obvious when they're upset about something. Yeah, um I, I think one thing we realised as, as adults working with children is that we shouldn't assume that they have all struggled through this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some children have really benefited, actually, as well. So we need to help them to see those positive things. Um, but if children do do seem to 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 be quiet or their behavior changes, and that's what parents have told us they've seen, is a shift in behavior, then it's just about having those honest conversations, you know, about this is difficult for all of us, isn't it? How are you mm -hmm. feeling? What are you missing? What can we do? Let's come up with some ideas to do things together. It doesn't need to be spending lots of money. You know, it can be more walks together. It can be picking flowers and pressing them and lots of the things we used to do back in the olden days <laughs> before we had tablets and things. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's it, uh, quite a lot of this is about conversation, actually. The children want people to talk to them from what they've told us. They want them to spend time with them playing games. You know, we've had lots of children talked about family games nights that hadn't happened before. You know, suddenly mm -hmm. we play dominoes and cards and things like that. So, or baking cakes, you know, or making toast, you know, all sorts <laughs> of anything major you know it's just engaging with the children i think well I, like i said it's an absolutely gorgeous book um i, I I'm, I'm very excited to think that my son's school has it the school i work for will have it as well and how it can be used as you say as a pathway to communication thank you so much for being on the show we'll include the contact information um on our facebook page to make sure people can find out more about the book and perhaps order a copy for themselves thank you for being on the show today you're very welcome thank you